Learn the latest news involving Wolves left wing back in Ainori, as well as many updates surrounding Usman Dembele, Aspilicueta, Marcus Alonso, Zelino Dest and Billy Gilmore as well too. We have a ton of things to break down. I can't waste no more time you guys. Very quickly hit that like button if you can. Help me go over 2k likes please and I also have to say thank you to everyone as well too for showing so much love and support on the channel since the summer period started. I hope you guys enjoyed the big collab I did with Eunice Talks Football and if you want to see me doing more collabs with other content creators in this community please in the comment section right now let me know who you want to see next. Without wasting any more time, let's start with things and let's talk Billy Gilmore because earlier today, he did sign a new two-year contract extension taking his existing deal now to 2024. So this tells us that the club see value in keeping Gilmore, a player that still has a ton of potential. I mean, we saw the things he was doing when he was first making his debut as a teen, you know, picking up Man of the Match awards for fun. Uh, he has an incredible weight of pass, uh, he knows how to move the ball very quickly, uh, plays very forward as well too, plus is very good with his close control and his low centre of gravity. I think that he's a player with a big, uh, a big future ahead of him, uh, he's proven that already at a very young age and maybe in like a different alternate timeline, you know, maybe things for more in his favour where he finds himself getting more consistent minutes playing for us. Um, you know, personally, I felt like maybe Tuchel was a bit too hasty in not allowing the player to leave on loan when he first came. And then when he did leave on loan uh, the following season, of course, last season, going to Norwich for me, I knew he was destined to flop there. Not because uh, Gilmore uh, can't uh, play for Norwich City, he's not good enough to play for them, but based on the fact that the way Norwich play, I, I don't care if they have similarities with how we play, it is a beta version. You know, when you're making certain passes to less quality players who aren't going to really take advantage of your skill set, in, in, in a sense, that will make you look bad eventually. And realistically, I was not expecting them to do anything there because how can you when they're just by far the weakest team in the league? So it was a bit disappointing that he was essentially wasted there. But now that he has this new uh, contract extension, it tells us that maybe the club still are casting their eye on Gilmore. Uh, the reality is, you guys, over the next maybe two, three years, we'll probably see more players leaving and there could be more spots open up in the team. So good luck to Gilmore. Let's hope that his pre-season goes well. Next up, we have to talk about Aspilicueta and Marcus Alonso. And with this uh, story in particular, it will follow on to Sergino Dest as well too. Now, reports have been coming out from Spain throughout the day, uh, talking about the futures of both players. Essentially, Aspi and Alonso held talks today about their future. Barcelona are very attentive to the situation at this point in time, even though any subsequent move for both players would still take a few more weeks. Uh, regardless though, we do know that Barca have presented Aspi a two-year contract worth 11 million euros. We know Alonso has already agreed personal terms already. And at this point in time, Barcelona's owners are kind of hoping that the club potentially do two things. One is give both players a letter of freedom, which essentially means, you know, uh, cancelling their contracts and letting them leave on the free. And the other option is, is to sell them for dramatically reduced prices, which I'm not too sure how likely that could be based on the fact that reports before said that we wanted over 10 million, 50 million euros for Marcus Alonso. But uh, could there be some sense behind this? Yeah, the two aging players on contracts worth six figures a week. We know Alonso earns around 150k per week, so the money you're saving on his player costs per year, you could probably sign a replacement on less wages that could work out being cheaper for you in the long run. Um, I'm not too sure about this though, but what is interesting is that in a very separate report that came out from England, it did bring up the fact that so Gino Desk could be used as a possible option in an exchange deal for the players. So how could this be? Could it be an example where, for example, you know, we sell the players to Barcelona for a very reduced fee, which then allows them to sell us Desk our way to make up the difference in value loss from selling Alonso and Aspi their way. That could be a thing. Or could we just offer Alonso and Aspi Luqueta, you know, in exchange for Sergino Des, which would also work out. Now, of course, the player season did end due to injury last year, but at the same time, some of the performances he was putting under Javi weren't the best, and he was kind of already in and out of the team, and it seemed more as a squad player at this point in time. Now, yeah, Barcelona, they believe in his potential, but before I get carried away, you guys, let's actually focus and deep dive now into Sergino Des and whether he would be a smart acquisition to make in this window. Now, I'm of two minds with this deal. 
I think Sabino Dest is a player that has some excellent attributes. However, he does have big weaknesses in this game as well. And essentially it's this. Offensively, he is very good. You know, he does have incredible dribbling. He can do that with both feet. Very nimble. He can create spaces with that. Very direct. And the ball is actually glued to his foot. Does that necessarily equate to like incredible final ball deliveries inside the books? Or, you know, like uh, good shooting efforts from outside the books? And uh, all, all those little details that, you know, also contribute to your like offensive game. Going forwards, he does have that pace and ability to trouble a lot of teams. And we know in the past that Tuchel has experimented a lot by using Hudson, Adoy and Pulisic as wingbacks throughout his time as our manager. So in that sense, I think Des does have some potential. And those details like crossing and other offensive parts of his game, of course, could improve if we play him in a way that gets the best out of his game. But at the same time, defensively, I think he is quite poor. I think 1v1, he's definitely someone he can beat. I think he does lack a bit of power when it comes to, you know, winning his 1v1 duels. Uh, as well, he is very weak aerially. I think his positional sense can be very off-key as well. You know, a lot of times he gets caught too high up the fields and that is something that you just can't get away with. I think the fact that his interception stats are so low tells you that he isn't necessarily, you know, sensing the danger before it comes and he is very much more reactive. But, you know, from analyzing his pros and cons, I think one thing that's fairly obvious is that maybe he would absolutely transform playing as a wing back where playing in that set role would allow him to be able to grow and improve other parts of his game. I think he is more of a wing back than a full back. I think he's one of those guys that, you know, could even play as a, a winger as well too, because he really is much better with that, you know, offensive trait in this game. And playing as a wing back in our system and you have more license to get forward, to get in behind. Uh, when you have defensive support behind you, as well as the midfield player alongside you as well too, that could definitely mitigate a lot of the weaknesses in his current game playing as a full back. We know Barcelona have to sell players. I think Sergino Dest's ability to, to play on the left-hand side could be handy, but you know that isn't the main selling feature because for me, quality matters more than what positions you can play in. But I just think him playing as a wing-back where his best parts of his game could actually complement us and the fact that Barca needs to sell and they want two of our players too, it could be an interesting option to look at. But I'll have to pose this question to you guys. Do you think Dest would be good here? Let us know below. So right now, let's talk the latest news surrounding Usman Dembele. Multiple reports are coming out from Spain and all of them have a very positive angle with their reports about the possibility of him signing for us in this window. Now, of course, we've spoken about Dembele all throughout the summer. Uh, H. Grimes, the Twitter account that, you know, for me, I've been following for, I'm not going to keep going on. You know, I do trust her. And he reports already that the pre-contract agreement has been sorted already. Of course, we know it's on a four-year deal as well too. Uh, other reports in Spain don't really have the insight at this point in time. But, you know, a lot of times when she reports something, you're getting extra bits of context and insight once these deals finally go through. And she does have a very, very good track record behind them. Regardless though, the fact that, you know, more media outlets from across Europe are supporting the idea that, you know, there's something happening here behind the deal, keep on resurfacing and intensifying over time. Now, Barcelona have given Dembele a contract offer that is currently on the table, but nothing is being assessed at this point in time. Uh, I think the reason why there's like a lot of maybe uh, slowness behind this move is that, you know, other clubs as well, are also presenting offers. I know Bayern Munich uh, have been reported to, to show interest in the player as a potential replacement for Nabry, plus another unnamed Premier League team too. So I'd imagine Dembele and his agent assessing your options and then they'll make that final decision afterwards once they've really got an understanding of what's happening. But still, all the reports about Tuchel playing a big factor in persuading the player are all correct. You know, Dembele wants to work with Tuchel again and these reports are also coming out from these outlets in Spain too. So the positivity keeps on intensifying and intensifying. The only way that this deal would actually fall through was if maybe Dembele just decided, you know, like last minute, you know, plot twist of the decade. I'm okay to take a dramatically reduced contract to stay at Barcelona, but based on how he's conducted business in every single move, especially with uh, Musa Sissoko alongside him, money is also key alongside the player's sporting 
aspirations and ambitions as well too. And coming to the Premier League, of course, you know, it does allow them to compete in a top league. Barcelona have all but given up hope around the steel. Uh, there's many a time they've threatened the player and threatened the player. Last year when they threatened that if he didn't sign the deal, he was going to be kicked out the team and then during January he was threatened again where he'd be left from the sidelines on the touchline throughout the entirety of the season and of course that never happened and never came to fruition and with Dembele actually coming back even stronger and really showing why he's one of the you know the best players in La Liga so I'm very excited behind this and I do have another video coming out where I want to just really deep dive into Dembele and to really discuss how he can improve us and whether he could potentially even be a risky signing. So you guys, we now end things with the final big report. So right now, let's end things with the final story and let's discuss I Nori of Wolves. Now, this story has come out from a few journalists in this country and other media outlets in England as well too. Uh, I Nori uh, is actually funny in a stream I did like a few days back. Uh, I actually spoke about it on the stream uh, based on a comment and this is a guy that I've actually, you know, known about and followed since hearing about what he was doing with Ongers and Lee Gunn. He has big potential. Uh, he already put in top stats uh, in his debut season for Ongers, who are 18 years old. When Wolves snapped him up, I was absolutely surprised by that. But, uh, you know, after having difficulties naturally adapting to a new country, language, league, culture, etc., etc., he's settled now. Last season, he really showed his promise of potentially being one of the star left backs in this country in the next few years. Now, interestingly enough, he is managed by super agent and Jorge Mendes. And essentially that tells you that, you know, guys like him only, you know, they only sign clients that they feel are going to be the next big thing. And reports now are saying that with Marcus Alonso going, it seems like he's got the blessing from the club. We are going to need a replacement. Of course, Matson. There's some news that Feyenoord are showing big interest behind the player. Some reports in Germany actually said that maybe Tuchel might not be as interested or as keen on the player as he originally was during last preseason. So we have to see what happens. But for me personally, I'm hoping that Matson at least gets a preseason to impress because you know, this guy can also play all uh, up and down that left hand side. But, uh, but regardless, we need some competition in the wing back areas. You'd imagine that last season Tuchel was literally just pulling his hair out his head when Reese James and Ben weren't able to play consistently and the dip that caused in the team wasn't as helpful but the things I really like about Ainori I'm always a sucker for these guys who are very very techie on the ball you know great close control and that willingness to beat his man and I think Ainori is one of these players that can really just get past anyone uh, on top of that too his overall game his all-round game at this age is a very very promising uh, his crossing is dangerous in the final third you know he plays really good one twos to you know create space separate himself to put in that low different cross or to really get to the byline and put a cross inside too uh, on top of this too his defending off the ball uh for wolves he's ranked first in many defensive actions and defensive stats as you guys can see on the screen as well too uh, 1v1 he is very good at sticking with his man he doesn't get beaten too easily and he's demonstrating that that potential that he originally showed of course in Lee Gunn. I think he has strong positional sense for his age. Um, he knows how to play as a wing back or, he, or even as a left mid a few times that he did for Wolves last season too. But uh, I just think that and his concentration has definitely improved a lot more and you know he is very difficult to get past. Um, yeah a player for his age I think at 20, 21 years old that is really good in the final third is also strong defensively, you know, in isolation by himself as well too, and defending alongside the team. Is there any surprise that other clubs like Man City, of course, too, are keeping an eye out for the player as well? Uh, for me, this guy has all the potential to be one of the leading left backs in Europe. I'm not going to be surprised to see him represent France really soon too. You know, this is the type of talent that, you know, I'm kind of excited to hear the links, and let's hope that we hear more reports behind the story. So you guys not know, I'm going to wrap things up keep things moving thank you for watching i'm in the fc this is blue lions tv i'll catch you guys later for some more videos cool